questions that are there. So uh, thank you for being here. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, thank you for this opportunity uh, to, again, get our heads and hearts around uh, the proposal for a potential new building for us, what it could mean, uh, and, uh, and praying for the wisdom in regards to that, either to move forward or not. Uh, we uh, trust you in that uh, and pray that our hearts would be uh, together uh, as we seek to honor you. Uh, all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lynn, if you'll come up. There she is. Thank you. Well, welcome back for round two. Um, and thank you to everybody who sent in questions. And my email has been published in um, the Weekly Word or What's Happening at Hope. I, I invite you to continue with the questions. No matter how hard or how difficult they may be, Thank you. Um, send them, and if I don't have the immediate answer for you, I will get the answer for you. So I'd like to frame us of where we left off and to repeat some of the information that you may have heard, you may have seen, because things have changed since the last time we met, based on some further information that we've got with the district um, and some information that they've given to us. So when we met last time, we gave you a presentation and there were lots of tiny little pages with tiny little numbers in them. They were real hard to read. Um, we did make those available in the weekly word and we will continue to make those available. Those are the financial statements that were turned in with the pre-loan application. Okay, so we've been pre-approved as we discussed last time from the district. The district then gave us feedback on that loan application that we sent them. And they said to us, thanks for sending this pro forma, but this pro forma talks to one point in time. And that's not enough for us. We would like you to do a real bona fide cash flow analysis. And for those of you that know, I graduated with an MBA in May. And that was one of the parts of my final assignment to get my MBA. So when the district was telling us this, I said, maybe this is why God had me do all of this. Because <laughs> I couldn't imagine why I'd need to know all of those formulas and those numbers for the rest of my life. So I met with Coraline yesterday, and we talked about what this cash flow analysis is going to look like. And this is not going to be easy to pull together, and I thank her for her commitment. This is going to be a very long document with lots of numbers. These numbers are going to look back historically at both Hope Church and Hope in Place School. It will revisit the point in time that we gave to the district. And then what we are tasked with is looking forward. And we have to have trends and analyses built into place in those numbers that are presented to the district based on what our goals are, where we see things going forward. So let's talk just a minute, and if I could have the next slide, please, Tyler, about all of the things that Pastor Kelly segued into this morning about interrelationship. When you look at who we are, there's a lot of branches of who we are at Hope. We are strong, we are mighty, and we have great ministries here. And we have great people that lead all these ministries. Amen. Yes, we do. We are truly blessed. And as God in the Bible tells us, it is now also our job to be good stewards of the blessing that God bestows upon us. So that's why we're doing all this analysis, right? And it's, it's, it, it, we're going to get it right with the numbers to show the district and to show you, our congregation, so that we could look at the history and look at the future and not just look at a snapshot in time. And I think that when I read a lot of the questions, a lot of you were asking about the history and a lot of you were asking about the future, right? But the pro forma addressed a point in time. So I think this cash flow analysis is also going to answer some of the harder questions that some of you had. Um, and I reached out to a couple of you to ask if you'd meet with me for some feedback as we do that. And I appreciate those of you who have said you'd do that um, because I think it's really important for this next snapshot. 
When we look at who we are and the composition of who hope is, there's a lot that goes into us. And one of the things that I want us to remember here today as we start to talk is a lot of us have some blinders on based on maybe an area that we work in or an area that we love. We may love the hope and play. We may love the kids. We may love the refuge based on what we're doing. I know certainly when Michael was here, you know, I spent a lot of time with the Hope and Play kids and, and refuge, and, and then now that he's off at college, I've, I've worked with Women of Hope, and now I'm, I'm sitting with the trustees. So our goals and our focus and how our lives change and where we plug ourselves into. I think it's important for today's discussion to remember that all of it together makes up hope. There's strength in all of the parts and the pieces that we have. And one of the things that I want to clear up, in, because there seems to be some confusion, is the tithing and the church do not support hope and play. Hope and play supports hope and play. And hope and play pays, for lack of a better word, rent for the space that they use. And it's really important for you as a congregation to know that the money that is paid from Hope and Play to Hope Church for the space that is used is very essential to making Hope run. And if we did not have that money, we'd have some serious problems because our tithing alone does not cover the work of Hope Church. So this interrelationship of the parts and pieces becomes so important when you start to look at it that way. And I thank God for Corlene every day because she's the one that takes all those numbers and breaks them into all of the different divisions so that leadership can look at the numbers and see how they work best together. So we are going to take all of the numbers again in that cash flow analysis and you'll be able to very clearly see what rests on the side of the church, and what rests on the side of hope and play. And, and that will really give us, and what, one of the other things that Coraline and I discussed yesterday is making those forms a little bit more readable for the average people. You know, Coraline's great with colors so that we can call out colors. Look at the green column, right? Because sometimes those spreadsheets, to me, are just a little overwhelming. There's just numbers and dots everywhere. So that, that's really what we want. Pe- we want people to understand the numbers and the relationship. And that, when we do that cash flow analysis, I'll tell you something. God's answer is going to be in the bottom line, of the, whether it's yes, can we do it, or no, we can't. Because if the numbers match up and there's enough money, that's one way God answers. And then we as a congregation have to vote on how we feel about that. So I appreciate the fact that we're pushing out the vote because we need time to do that very important work. Tyler, if I could have the next slide, please. We talked a lot last time just reviewing for you about what we are dedicated to. We look at this slide every Sunday that we walk in here, all of the documents that we put out from Hope. If you look at our website, we are dedicated to connecting with God, each other, and our community. And we know that all of the missions of hope, including hope and play, help us execute on that. We also know that the preschool helps us reach the community. And we know that the children that we're raising up through that preschool are going to become our mature followers of Jesus Christ if we pour into them, right? Because the... That's the future. They're going to be taking care of us, right? So that, that's really very important. The other thing is we know now the struggles that we face connecting with each other due to some space limitations. You know, we do have things happening at home, and we do have things happening on Zoom, and I understand the pandemic has caused some of that. But we also know that our growth and our ability to meet here is very hindered, right? Especially if you've ever put in one of those event forms and need to talk to Renee about event space, it becomes a little bit more difficult. You've got to to make sure that nobody's meeting here on this day and that there isn't something else going on. So we, we, to an extent, have to limit what we do that way. Pastor Kelly finally has some office space back again, which all pastors should have, hooray. Um, But, you know... I love our pastor as much as you do. He needs a little more space. 
You know, he doesn't have a nice conference table in there where he could sit down with a group of people. So that's certainly one of our plans for the future. Tyler, if I could have the next slide, please. So we talked last night about the expansion of Hope and Play. And all of these slides will be included in the weekly word for you to see and be able to pour through, because I know there's a lot of text on them. So we certainly want to be able to reach more in the community. As current state, and we'll allow lots more questions and, and feedback from um, Lisa after we're done with the presentation, except for the threes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, all classes are full with a wait list, which is great, but imagine if you're one of the parents on the wait list. Right, because as a single mom for all the years that I was a single mom, you're put on a wait list and you're on your knees every night praying to God for something to open up for you because you know that you have to go to work or you have things to get done and you need that help. So that will certainly uh, be able to help us even more. We'll also be able to, with larger space, accommodate larger classes. As I'm sure everybody here knows, there are restrictions on what we can and can't do and the number of teachers to the number of children and, and all of those spaces that we have accommodate a certain number of children. So it's not like we could just ooh, sneak one more in. That, that's not how it works. And we see the overflow of that problem, not only from Hope and Play, but into the children's ministries. As, as Amy struggled with this summer, you know, we're confined to how many kids we can have at camp. You know, and if you're the mother of that, if you can only take 40 and you're the 41st mother and you're Miss Amy and have to look her in the eyes and say, I'm sorry, we just have no more room, it's difficult. And it's not like we have all these empty spaces that we're trying to fill, we have wait lists. The other thing that, um, that the addition will also do, it's going to help us expand to before and after care. So there's going to be that wraparound for parents that need that help with their kids. We know about the expansion in Trinity. We know about what's being built after the hospital was built and all of these medical offices going in and the needs of adults that are working in those places to have child care. Can we have the next slide, please, Tyler? The new building is made to be brought up to the current standards for what is needed for child care. Every year, new standards are passed. It's not only that we want to give it a facelift, but there are new standards and there are new things that we need to make sure that, that we're looking at. You know, you see in the back that the water fountains are, are sectioned off because of COVID, right? But we also know that schools are moving away from water fountains because they want to go to water bottle fillers. They want to go to things that are more safe and more healthy for children. You know, our director, Lisa at Hope and Play, has been very successful in getting a number of grants through COVID. What, what a wonderful opportunity for some of that grant money to be used, not only now for the current school, but as we progress forward. And those opportunities don't go away. Those are things that we'll keep looking for. We'll be able to also give a safer area for the children because we will be able to lock down where the children are. Right now, when the kids are in class, like on Sunday mornings, and, and we have to go to the restroom, we're walking right past where all those areas are that the kids are in. And during the day, if anybody's up at the school, that, that poses some security you know, concerns. So this, you know, the staff is always watching very closely and making sure the kids are safe. However, we have the ability to be able to increase the technology and provide better security, which gives parents a really great peace of mind when they sign up with the preschool. We'll also be able to have elevator access between the first and second floor with the building design as it is. Um, there will be an additional amount of meeting rooms for our adults, and we'll also be able to have a designated youth area. You know, teens, teens and youth, you know, they all have their own special needs. And we do the best that we can to try to, to meet those now. And for those of you that stack chairs on Sunday, thank you, thank you, thank you. But wouldn't it be great if we didn't have to stack chairs anymore? <sighs> I, I, don't know, I don't know about anybody else, but every year that we got to stack those chairs, I'm feeling it a little bit more. <sighs> So it really would be nice if we didn't have to do it. God, we appreciate your blessings, but we want to make it better for, <laughs> for the congregation. Can we have the next slide, please? So 
where are we now? What is the status? We know that Hope and Play helps keep our church financially sound. We know that that's the reality of it. So that, that, is a very, that is a very important thing. And if we want to increase our work at the church, we need to increase money. And that comes from two ways, either increase money from Hope and Play or increase money from tithing. I hope we get both because that's what we need. But financially, we know that the money that Hope and Play is giving us now is helping make this church run. So let's talk a little bit about the funds and the pledging, okay? Now, when the funds were derived and their pledge drive was done years ago, the number that we arrived at was $580,000 of pledges. And we, we had two different bookkeepers between when we started this and where we are now. Plus, we've had an upgrade to our Shelby computer system. For those of you that don't know what Shelby is, that's where all the finances go. That's the membership. That kind of makes us work from the paperwork um, side of things. So when we took that $580,000 when it was first pledged, we made some assumptions of what that looks like over five years. And for anybody that has a calculator, because I can't do math in my head, we looked at roughly that $580,000 would break down to about $116,000 per year. However, the Shelby system did not necessarily track what we said as that $116,000 a year versus what was coming in. But what we can pull convictively from Shelby is how much each individual congregant pledged and how much they've donated so far. So we know what those pledge sheets that everybody, everybody remembers, they filled out a pledge sheet for how much they were willing to pledge. We know what those pledge sheets came out to. We know where we still need to hit our number. Those pledge sheets, as we pull the numbers out of Shelby, thank you, Corleen, come up to $553,000 and, and a little bit extra. And we've collected 502, leaving a shortfall of about $50,000 of pledges we still need to collect, okay? So there, there still are pledges now. Throw in a little pandemic, and we can see why maybe some of the pledges didn't, you know, we, we had congregants that lost their jobs. We, you know, people were cut back on. So, so there is still an outstanding of $50,000, however, when you look at the building account, and that is what I look at weekly and monthly as the trustee chair, we look at the bottom line of how much money is in that account. And as I stand before you right at this moment, there is $218,804.80 in our building account. Now, this, this money is going to bridge us during the construction. See, we're almost done paying the mortgage on the building that we're in now. And we're going, if we go forward, yes, that is good news. Uh, if we go forward, we're going to take a loan. We know that. During the construction phase, we're not gonna be paying on the mortgage. We'd be paying interest only. We don't actually start the mortgage payments until we get the certificate of occupancy and people are in that building. So it, the, the, the amount that we need during that building time is less than the whole mortgage and the interest. It's just the interest only. So that money that's in the building account now will be what we draw from to make those interest only payments. Now, I also got some other very good questions about, Lynn, what, what if another pandemic comes? What if, what if there's an emergency? What if we can't make this payment? Well, God provides there too. This loan isn't like with the Chase Bank down the street. The loan that we applied for is through Florida United Methodist Conference, okay? It's their foundational arm, okay? That's their finance agency, if you will, okay? So I had Pastor Kelly ask the district this week, some very hard questions. Well, what do they do if we don't pay? What if we miss a payment? What if we're late on a payment? What if we're a little short? What do we do? So the district was very clear that in all the years that they can count, 
They've never taken away a building from anyone. What they do, if, if we were to fall on hard times or there was a problem, they come and they sit with you. They sit with leadership, they sit with the pastor, and they look at the current scenario that's causing the problem, give you tips and hints to try to rectify the problem, and then we'll work to renegotiate payments with you. Now, we certainly don't want to go that road, right? We want to be able to meet the obligations and be good stewards of our money and be able to pay. But I want to assure everyone here that the district wants us to be successful. And they are going to do anything possible to help us in that if we fall on hard times. And they've done that through the pandemic with other churches. You know, they've talked about the fact that in, in certain scenarios in the past, there are some churches that maybe they no longer want their building or they want to close their doors. And they talk about how they merge other churches with it. And, and they come up with creative solutions so that there's just no defaulting in just this empty building sitting that's not doing God's work. So that is for, for those that asked that question, it was a great question, but we have been, again, reassured on that piece. We're going to talk a little bit more about what the yes or a no when we do vote looks like. Because we're 50-50, right? We could get a yes, we can get a no when we take the vote. But there's also that gray area in the middle called maybe. And I know when we talk about a vote, it's either yes or no, but as we work through the next couple of months and numbers, some of you may say, this isn't the time. The answer isn't yes or no, maybe it's let's wait a little bit. So I, we want to be really clear with you today on what that all looks like going forward. Our building committee has done a great amount of work, and here's how the building committee worked. The trustees are responsible for all buildings and maintenance. So when we decided we were gonna go forward with the building, we pulled together an ad hoc committee called the building committee. And the building committee was tasked with working with an architect and coming up with what they presented to us to put in to the district as the pre-loan approval. So the building committee has completed their initial work and they have been dissolved right now. Now the work is turning back to the trustees to finish up the work. If we find things get you know, very busy or we need extra help and we have to convene another ad hoc committee, that can be done. But right now, the initial work has been completed and now we're in a holding pattern. We do have an architect, we do have an engineer, we do have a building firm, and we are ready to start negotiations on a contract for the construction manager. We will not sign that contract with a construction manager unless the church votes yes, we go back to district, tell district our congregation has voted yes, and then district gives the final stamp of approval, yes, we will give you the money for the loan. So there, there's still a couple of steps that need to happen, okay? Tyler, if I could have the next slide. To remind you of what work has gone into this by the architects and the designers so far, this is what the front of the building will look like. So that building, nothing happens to this existing building. This is an additional building and there will be a walkway between the two buildings. And as you could see there, the walkway would come up alongside of where the, the basketball court is now. The basketball court, court will go away with the building. Can I have the next slide, please, Tyler? And that is what the back would look like. That little building in the, the lower right corner of the screen is the back of the pavilion. The pavilion stays. That area, that, that area will stay. So that's that, that, that little area in the back of the pavilion. So just to orient you to, to what that does look like. Next slide, please. What I did was I blew up the floor plans a little bit more in the slide presentation if you want to examine it. You know, I know they were kind of scrunched together in the last one, so when you, you look at your packet from the, the weekly word or what's happening at Hope, 
you'll be able to see this a little bit more. You could see clearly the first floor, you could see clearly the second floor, and the images are blown up enough that you could see what the guesstimate is for what's gonna be an adult classroom, what's gonna be a child's classroom, what's gonna be office space. We've got all of these already pre-drawn in. It'll show where closets are, it'll show where the bathrooms are, because a lot of this work has to go in before any of the building actually does start. Next slide, please, Tyler. So, as we discussed last time and shows in the packet that's in our handouts on the website that comes out with the weekly word, the requested loan amount was $5.5 million. This would cover the new building plus this existing building that we're in now, a new roof and new air conditioning. For those of you that don't know, we do have a roof leak. Thank you very much to Greg Cornett for braving the elements this week to get up there um, and do some extra repair to make the water stop flooding into a classroom. So it, it, there, there is still a need in this building. So the new building cost is estimated at 4.7 million and then there is a performance bonds that the district is requiring us to pay for a construction manager to make sure that the prices are fixed. So originally, when that pro forma was originally created, that $35,000 is not in the pro forma because that was something that the building committee kind of moved out thinking it was too expensive. District came back and said, Sorry, you need to put it back in. So, so those new numbers that we're talking about with the clash flow analysis will also reflect that $35,000. Our estimations from the pro forma of the $86,000 per month of revenue versus the $38,000 per month of expense will probably change a little bit as we do the cash flow analysis and I wanna tell you why. The state of Florida, as you know, is going to be changing minimum wage over the next couple of years. And the district has been clear to us that in our projections for the future, they want us to show that increase that's going to be required. Okay, so that they, and they also want us to show the increase in benefits and tax payments that are going to make, be made to staffing and stuff like that. So those are, those are additional number crunching that we're gonna do. So those numbers you may see tweak a little bit and, and we also are gonna reanalyze each classroom what the maximum capacity is and make sure that we have that revenue side correct as well in that we're, we're, we'd be utilizing the classrooms correctly and the pro forma looked at 80%. District does wanna see what 100% full looks like what, and what 80% full looks like as well. And we will do those projections for them as well. So right now that's 45 to 48K plus a month. That's correct. Next slide please, Tyler. So what does the future look like? What does it look like if we go forward with this? Well, it would mean that hope and play would be full time. Because right now it functions very similarly to a mother's morning out. It's a part time program for childcare. That means they'd be open every day, including summers. And they'd be closed, obviously, for national holidays, Christmas week, Good Friday, kind of like the same school schedule that, that the Pasco County School works on. It would also offer hours to accommodate working parents. That means early drop off and late for people that need to pick up later. And then there are other child care options for VPK students and other students. So we'll be able to expand the reach into the community for others that need not just those preschools, but others that have school age children that may need assistance there. Next slide, please, Tyler. What does the future of children's ministry or kids ministry look like? Well, they would stay here in the existing building. That's the, the initial thought as, as we expand in the future. And that means that we would give a facelift to the rooms for Sunday morning schools. We would redecorate them to be more age appropriate. Right now we've got 
preschool settings on the wall. There are preschool toys that are around, right? And then we put our kids or even, and our youth in there and they adapt and they overcome. But we'd be able to design these spaces that, that would be more age appropriate for them. We would also be able to increase summer camp um, by 50%. That, that, that's a, hu that's a huge um, percentage of an increase. Um, and that not only does that help in the community, um, but that helps us as a church because we do know um, that we watch those kids, right? We watch what they do. We, we, we hear our, the service when we come back when summer school ends to see how we are raising mature followers of Jesus Christ. And that is one of the ministries we do that through. Next slide, please. What does the future of refuge look like? And what does the future of that youth ministry look like? Well, the new building would accommodate a dedicated place where these teens can find refuge from the outside world where the, where the name actually came from. It would be a safe place for them, and it would be geared from 6th to 12th grades, which is 11 to 18, and we would have more space so that if we needed to break them out to age-appropriate groups for the work that they were doing or the, the, the meetings that they were having, we can do that. And they would have their dedicated space for their own Sunday school, for their activities, for their events, all while we have enough room and space for all of the activities that our church does, our Bible studies, our small groups, and all the other events that we like to have. We still see summer camp in the future devoted to 6th to 8th grade. Uh, we would, I'm sorry, we would be able to add 6th to 8th grade because right now the camp isn't doing 6th to 8th grade. Is that correct, Amy? One class. Okay. So we'd be able to expand the area because we're, we're, we're um, capped at 10 there. Next slide, please. What about the other ministries of hope? How, how does that the future look with the new building? Well, missions, small group, women of hope, those, those are all of our, our other missions that are going on. Well, it gives us increased space. And that would allow us to offer increased offerings. We'd be able to do increased activities. We'd be able to do more engagement and have more one-on-one -on -one space. For those of you that have come to you know, a wonderful Women's of Hope event here in the sanctuary, we're moving chairs, we're putting up tables. We have to limit ourselves on how many tickets we sell because we only have a certain amount of space. That changes. That gives us that flexibility to move forward to the future. So I heard a quote this week that I actually wrote down so I don't bumble it. Um, and I thought it was great because looking to the past is great. But if you're looking at what a building looks like, our past should be our foundation because the future does not fit in the framework of the past. We have done great things here at Hope but to go forward into the future, the framework of this wonderful building doesn't necessarily house us any longer. So the future means more and needing more. So let's talk a little bit, next slide please, about what the vote looks like and how it will eventually be conducted. And you heard Pastor Kelly this morning say that we, we are pausing on that date for that vote. But when, when we do have that vote and what we learned from district just recently, we cannot set a quorum and we cannot set minimum attendances for the vote. How the book of discipline goes is it's going to be by the attendance at that meeting of members. You have to be a member to be voting and it's the people that come to that meeting. And we do know, especially now, Delta variant and everything going on, we not only will be here in the church, but we will do this via Zoom. And we're gonna have to set up some logistics around Zoom. And Kristen um, is working hard to help put those logistics into place so that everybody will have you know, a detailed list of what needs to happen because we need to count votes very carefully so that we're sure that it's members that are voting, that it's one you know, vote per member and all of that. We know that um, we can use the Zoom panels and people can enter their names into the chat. We also know that names come up around your face on that little Zoom window and, and you can customize those. So we're putting all of these 
logistics into place so that we're sure if we need to do online and we're going to do online and in person we we certainly hope that everybody could be here in person because we love the fellowship of being together but we want to make sure that we do it right and we do it according to how the district requires that it is done to be a valid vote it's it, they require a little bit of paperwork on that on that respect so we'll make sure that that gets done they'll also um what they require is a simple majority so it's 50 plus one so it, it you know it that's why we're taking the time to talk to everybody there's so much stuff and so much information we want to give everybody the time um, to be able to digest it and understand so that they feel comfortable and confident going in into what the decision will be next slide please does anybody remember those little balls that you used to, that these, my dad had one of these when I was a kid and it used to fascinate me. Just, I could sit there and watch them all day long, right? And if you think of hope, every one of the ministries at Hope is one of those little balls. And that building is the impact that it's gonna have to every one of those ministries. And we wanna make sure that everybody really understands what a yes really does mean or what a no really does mean because you know we can go either way on this can i have the next slide please what would a yes look like if we were to vote yes we already know that there are financial considerations that we've got to take into into account right that's why we're doing the cash flow analysis and if all of that works out and we look at those numbers and they they meet and the projections are good that the numbers are going to meet what we need, but it would ensure um, the yes means us ensuring that hope and play is going to be full. That means there's gonna be some extra work by our staffers, right? To make sure that we're full with our programs and that we're doing the marketing, the outreach, the communications that we need to make sure those seats are full. It means that we'll be making changes to our current children's wings as it sits there to make it more functional. It means that there's gonna be um, more emphasis on the youth program. You know, right now Amy Kirby is, is straddling two positions and it may mean that that growth um, would have us reevaluate what perhaps adding additional people to that looks like again. <laughs> There'll be an emphasis on evangelism Welcome, welcoming and working to bridge the gap between hope and play and the church family. We want to see more of that integration of the families at hope and play into the congregation here. Okay, and it is one of the things that the district did ask us to, you know, from both ends. How are we working on hope and play to encourage that to happen? And how are we working on from Hope Church, right? Because it, it, they're both, the pivot needs to happen from both places to make that go. Tyler, can I have the next slide, please? What would a no look like? Well, a no would look like, here's what we have. Now we have to use what we have, and we're gonna have to make some changes to it, because you just heard me talk about the roof that's leaking and the air conditioning that needs to be changed. So we would certainly need to take out a loan to do those repairs because we know that they need to be done. We would also continue to use shared space in the education hall and the sanctuary, you know, moving chairs on Sundays, right? It would be very similar to what we're, we're, we're doing, but we, we'd have a very strategic plan for how that would happen. We will continue to do discipleship in homes and small groups throughout the community or through Zoom because we'll still be limited in the space that we have here. We would need to make a plan for our staff and them working from home because we don't have the room to give them offices here any longer. We'd need to figure out a way um, to be able to accommodate hope and play based on requirements and safety standards that are constantly evolving and changing. And that might mean that we'd have to take away the pastor's office also. So we know that there would be a shared space for children and hope and play as well as education. It, it, we would just have to have some more definition to what that, that does look like. So we know very clearly what yes looks like and what no looks like. We're gonna, I'm gonna ask Pastor Kelly in just a slide or two to, to visit a little bit deeper with you on that. But to tell you what's next. 
So we know that the vote on August 29th is being pushed. We don't have a date for that yet. You know, we're going to do this in God's time also. We're not going to, we're not going to rush this. We're going to make sure that the questions are answered and people are comfortable. This is a very emotional topic for a lot of people, as well as it should be. This is our work for God. It better tug at your heartstrings, because this is what he created us for. We also know that we still need some hard work to be done that needs to go to the district. And we're committed to that. We're committed to that cash flow analysis. We're committed to written plans from the school, from the children's group, from all of the ministries on what they see going forward. Or if we get a no, how can they continue to function? So that's a lot, that's a lot of work, you know, in addition to what they're already doing. We do know that if we, we do not go forward with the new building, we do have to look very long and very hard at this building and do the repairs that we've, you know, we're waiting on. But we know that they, they're going to need to be done. So there's a lot of very good work that needs to be done. And we want to make sure that you have the information. This is not our last town hall. And if you get tired of listening to me talk, you can have some sympathy for my husband. Because he listens to me drone on a whole lot. Um, but we, we, we certainly encourage the, con we have to have these difficult conversations. As difficult as they are, we have to have them. I want to open up to Pastor Kelly um, to give some feedback if he thinks that, they, no, he's shaking his head. He thinks I did a good job. Thanks. Thank but I also want to open it up um, and ask any of the staff if you have anything that you would like to add. Um, and we can certainly take questions, and maybe the questions might be more pointed. I don't like to put people on the spot, and I could tell by their faces, Lynn, you're putting us on the spot. So um, I don't like to put anybody on the spot. So I do want to open up for questions. And if, if they're really detailed questions about numbers, if I don't have the numbers right in front of me, I promise you, Corleen and I will get them for you. Okay, so can I open the floor for any questions? Yes. I have one question. Um, We're going to give you a microphone so the people at home can hear you also. Please speak right into that microphone. Like this? Yes. That's a little loud. Okay. okay. Um, you said before that if we say no, we would need to take a loan to cover the expenses of fixing the existing building. Correct. All right, so with that in mind, why would we take a loan if we have the $218,000 in the bank? The $218,000 is in a designated fund. That designated fund, it's a restriction on how money is used. Right now that designated fund says that the money in that account can only be used for a new building and new building projects. Now, I, this has happened before at Hope, and I found this out when I started doing all this stuff for chair. There was a, a new building done, they, they tried this a couple of years ago, long time ago, and that money sat in that account because it was a designated fund. Because it's not easy to release funds from a designated fund. So I hope that answers it. Yeah, you you can reallocate, but you have to, you normally have to go to the people who made the donation yeah. and ask them if they're willing to re reallocate. Right. So if I gave money for a new cross on the wall, you can't just spend it on whatever you want unless you ask the donor. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, they're they're subtly to that, but basically it's kind of yeah. earmarked for that. So, which it, it could be mm -hmm. to answer your question, you you could you could redirect that towards those things, but you'd have to get permission basically from the donors. Yeah. Because it's, if you think about it, it's kind of like a bait and switch. Yeah. You know, I gave money for this and now you're gonna use it for that. So you wanna honor the gift that was given and the purpose for which it was given, right? Yes, Nick. I'm wondering if there's been any discussion about having an additional fund drive for people who maybe were not here at the church at the time. 
um, or for people who have given a fund uh, a donation but want to change it? I'm not aware of any, Pastor Kelly. Uh, no, we, we did say when we started the first campaign that that was a possibility going forward, yeah. Um, but, I mean, that we could do another campaign, right? That, no, I would think that we'd want to collect on maybe some of the outstanding or maybe readdress some of the outstanding that is still outstanding to see if, if, if there is a chance that we might get that money and if not, reallocate the numbers, right? Because if somebody pledged and they've had, you know, a change in their circumstance and they say, oh, you know, I'm not going to be able to meet that, you know, maybe then we need to, to, to look at those numbers a little bit differently. But that's a very good question. Okay. I'll take checks when you're walking out the door. <laughs> you mentioned the money from the previous mm -hmm. building fund. Is Can that be used for the new building mm -hmm. now? Yes, it, it does sit in that account because it was earmarked for a new building. So yes, it is, is in the, it is in that same accounting that you saw of the $218,000 that we have on hand it, now. That money is encapsulated in, in there. That. There was a balance brought forward from that previous campaign of $31,697.40. Thank you. That was the balance that was in the account when we started um, the pledges. Hi, then. Hi. We were here wondering, we were kind of new to the building part of it because we're newer members, but there isn't a connection between this building and the new building covered. Is that purposeful? Or would we ever need that kind of covering if we're going from here to a classroom? Jim, I know we talked about coverings for the new building. Could I, I, I it, the covered building, Greg, if you have the answer on that one? Or Jim. Or Jim, either of you, because I know ahead, you Jim. sat on the building. A covered walkway between the two buildings. Yeah, there's currently the design, there is a covered walkway, as you see, goes down the side of the new building and will also extend over. What you have to understand in this building is that the, the buildings cannot touch. And um, they have to be freestanding on their own because um, a lot has changed when it comes to, um, you know, uh, fire regulations and, and the like. So if the buildings were to touch, okay, then this building would have to conform with the current regulations, which mean would have to be sprinkled and you know there would be a lot of work that would have to be done on this building so so yeah there's going to be um, a covered walkway between the buildings but um, you know they they will not touch there will also Kathy there will also be a covered walkway for the new building right so if you pulled up was that yeah it, the, it, the two pieces in between is the one piece that you don't see you know, um, there's supposed to be a covered walkway. That's a, it's designed with a covered walkway from where the children get dropped off back to where they enter the building. So there'll be a covered walkway for the children to, to enter yeah. the building. So there wouldn't be, and I hear what you're asking, so there wouldn't be for this building, but the new building, because it's going to be built to code, is going to have ADA access ramps, and there will be a covered drop-off area for the new building. So potentially... If someone needed a covered area, they could come through. Now, it wouldn't, Correct. Wouldn't, it, it, it would be a little bit more of a walk, but they could be dropped off at the covered area by the new building and walk through to this building. Does that make yeah. sense? If, if I may, you, I don't know if you can really see it in the, in the picture, but you see where the folks are standing here? The walkway or the cover goes all the way out to the, to the drop off, basically, the parking lot, and goes down the side of the building, which would basically be if you're looking this way. To the parking area, it's this going this way. Okay, so the little bush here you see where the lady is walking on the sidewalk, that's the corner of this building. So there is space between, but there's a covered walkway for that particular building. And like Jim said, because of code, you can't, can't connect because if this building caught fire, it would just run to the next one. For fire code, there's also when you connect buildings, whatever code is applicable to the new building, then you have to make that applicable to the current building. Like like you said, sprinkling and all that kind of stuff, which is a, yeah. I just think about it's a good question. Right. 
there, there would be an open space where you would get wet. <laughs> Briefly. Yep. Yep. I think that open space is going to be seriously like three inches between our building and, and the covered walkway. It was, it can be that close. It just can't it just connect. can't connect. We're going to wait. We're going to have you get, talk in the microphone so people at home can hear you. I was, um, <laughs> I was at the uh, pilgrimage this weekend, and we got to talking in one of our discussion groups about the possibility of having space where we could um, store stuff, um, especially maybe single mothers or single parents, that we could have a storage area where maybe dress for success or something like that, additional projects that could be given um, to the, you know, the church could be utilizing. I was just wondering, is there any thought about anything like that? There's lots of storage space um, from what I've seen that has been built into the new uh, building. So I think we would just need to, we would need to look at all of the ministries and see how best to allocate what will be open space here as well as what would open up there. You mentioned twelve fifty an hour, and then you mentioned fifteen dollars an hour. Uh, can you take that in consideration? If it's fifteen dollars an hour in the future, here in the next couple of years or whatever, that if it's the whole state of Florida that's going to be have a minimum of fifteen dollars, how difficult is it going to be to get teachers without having to increase their salary? Right, un un understood. One of the definite things that we do need to look at in that cash flow analysis going forward is not just for the teachers, it's also for the administrator and, and what that looks like and what different trend patterns would be um, in the state. And it, actually, by, you could pull some of that by zip code, but yes, we are going to have to trend that out in that cash flow analysis. On that also, uh, does the staff and the employee pay for, or I mean, uh, Social Security. How does Social Security work as far as the... Yes, so our, our, our staff members do have Social Security paid. That's the benefit that I talked about that needs to be allocated. And, and district will have us allocate in future years for a little bit higher for tax raises and, and tax increases. Yeah. Okay. And the, the other thing that does not show on the pro forma, which you picked up on, we do not have a line item for a dedicated maintenance person. And as much as I love the trustees that I work with, we are not going to be able to meet the needs of what a school with that many children are going to do. So we're going to need an additional staffer from that perspective. So that's not covered in the pro forma, but that would be something with that cash flow analysis going forward we certainly would look at. Can you tell me how much of that $580,000, you already told us how much was on hand. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how much of the $580,000 is outstanding? That's number one. Yes. Number two. Yep. How much money have we already spent? Okay. So we are outstanding $51,067, and we have spent over the years with the architects, with all of our building, with our permitting. Give me one second to find the right one here. It's close to $330,000. And I apologize, I'm not pulling out the right one. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let me just get to the right page. Now, the numbers that I have of what we spent do not take this month into account. So give me a second. Isn't this fun? It's 
348,000 and some change of what has been spent. Now remember, that's not just the pledged money, that was the money that was currently in that account. And there have also been, um, what do you call them, a one-off contribution, Corleen? When somebody puts in a contribution that is not part of the pledge, those are called additional contributions. So there have also been additional contributions to that line item also above the 580 of what was pledged. And that does not take into consideration this last month's payments. We are paying, just so you know, from that account, we are paying a monthly bill to our architect for the work that they are doing. Now, right now, it's been pretty slow. We did pay the engineer some money for permitting. Permitting is taking longer in Pasco County because of the pandemic. We've paid for permits that are not completed yet. There's got to be something else. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to reiter reiterate what my wife Pamela said. In my working career, I worked as a systems engineer, computer systems engineer in the Boston area to technology and financial firms. And I've worked in New York and Chicago as well. Heard many presentations. Never have I heard anybody more clear, more concise, and more on top of the information than you. Thank you. I we guess it's my spiritual have. gift then. <laughs> we are lucky to have you. Because I'm sweating pretty hard under these lights up here. <laughs> It doesn't show. You're doing great. Thank you. I'd like to tell just a short story for a minute. My wife, Pamela, would you stand up, Pamela? <laughs> Thank you, dear. Okay. We were married 25 years ago in a little chapel over in Tarpon Springs. That chapel was built in 1954. Pamela was three. They didn't know her, and they didn't know a five-year-old boy in West Virginia but they knew we were coming. Or at least they hoped and prayed we were coming as we hope and pray young Christians are coming after us. Mm -hmm. But those people, those faithful Christians in Tarpon Springs in the early 50s built that church in the same manner that 2,000 years of Christians have built church buildings for them. And the Christians that came before them were faithful to the Christians in Tarpon Springs which in turn were faithful to my wife and I as we were married in a church that was built when they didn't know us. So as we consider this big decision, I would ask each and every one of you to look into your hearts and think about the little boys and little girls out there everywhere that are going to come here after us and 50 years from now are going to have their lives improved, changed, and get closer to God and Jesus and what we do now. So the question before us is not just financial, although it's absolutely financial. The question before us is, are we gonna forge our link in that chain of faithfulness that stretches back 2,000 years? Are we gonna do that now? So look into your hearts and answer that question. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things that you said, Lynn, had to do with uh, Hope and Play and involving those families and children here at Hope. I've been here for a really long time, and to be perfectly honest, as a church, not as a Hope and Play administrator or teachers or anything like that, we have not done a good job with that at all. What is the plan and who is in charge of that to make that happen? I think that plan is going to have to be double pronged. It's going to need to come both from the hope and play side with a plan and from our leadership on the hope side because I think we have to meet in the middle for that. And that is something that 
Lisa would need to work on with her strategic plan for a new building, that marketing piece, and what we as a leadership of hope need to also look at. Not only how do they reach us, how do we reach them, how do we meet them in the middle? And I agree, they, they, there has definitely been, um, and the district kind of called us out on it a little bit. They said, we don't see, and quite honestly, we haven't done a great job of tracking certain things either. Now, we're in a whole new ball game with the new computer system. Renee and I spent an hour the other night looking at how can we program specific fields to look at specific information, right? So we're talking about the spiritual gifts, but I also showed her, well, let's, let's start to take another field and let's start to track who's coming from hope and play, you know? And, and that's something they definitely want to see. Lisa has a comment on that too. Um, I do track that. 80% um, of the overall enrollment in Hope and Play are fed. They might not be here, but there are other chair churches around this area, which have better programs that draw younger families. Mm -hmm. If we had that, it would not be a problem mm -hmm. whatsoever. That's the problem. Yeah. I, well, and I, I think there are certainly events that we do that we could all do a better job when we're collecting things. Amy, when we did the Easter egg hunt, I happened to volunteer with Amy for the Easter egg hunt. And for those of you that were here for that Easter egg hunt, I just kept thanking the Lord. I did, all these people just kept coming through the door. They kept coming through the door. And all I could think to do was just keep getting email addresses. Can you stop? Can you give us? You know, I talked to every parent as they come through, and I, I turned this big list over to Amy, and I said, well, we got them all. What do we do with it? Right? So the purpose and making plans, and that is something, Ellen, you, you, hit, you hit a nail right on the head, and we do need to be strategic in that. We need to task our staff and our leadership to be strategic with what we're doing there. And the marketing approach also. Now, let's, let's be honest, right? We don't have a lot of extra money for marketing. Marketing is expensive, right? All the pretty ads and the billboards and all the stuff that we, we, we drive by and we see other very blessed churches have, we might not have had that. However, we can work to get there, right? We need to set strategic goals and have strategic business plans that would encompass that and get us there. One of the huge things that I truly believe that this building is gonna give us an opportunity for is to re-put us on the map to all of the corporations and companies around us. Because some people know us, right? We, we, we have our normal places that we go and they know us. However, Trinity Hospital's not giving us any money. They got lots of money that they pay out in grants throughout a year. Well, we need to get our face in front of them again, right? There are a lot of corporations that we can, we can hit up to acknowledge us and to help co-support us in this community. And that's what we get a chance to do again with a bigger building. And we, could, we should be doing it with this building, but we get another opportunity and a refreshed look from the community at who we are and what we stand for. Does that help, Ellen? Thank you for addressing that. Um, one of the town hall meetings way back in the day, they talked about the road mm -hmm. out here. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if there's anything going forward that this whoever owns all this property back here mm -hmm. is ready to develop and that we're gonna lose our access road to the church. We're not losing the access road to the church. Okay. It's just being expanded for community use. Okay. So it's gonna be cut through, and Pastor Kelly is so much better at directions than I am. Um, it goes that way, that way, that way, okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm good at a lot of things. <laughs> but directions isn't one of them. So yes, so not only is it going to go out that way, but all of the building of the, it's going to connect all of those new homes that are being built. Don't ever there. ask Lynn how to get to Clearwater. <laughs> <laughs> right. What, what we use as entrance is actually an extension of photonics, which is across the street. So we actually don't own that. So where you see the, the shrubbery, that's the edge of our property. So that 
entranceway will actually become a road that goes all the way to Duxlow. And the development, it, it's to be determined, that there's been, it's been sketched out, but nothing beyond that is all housing. And that's been plotted for years for that purpose. Yeah. If, if what we're going through with the building, and not we, I, I, I say we for trustees, but it's really Jim that's dealing with those headaches. Um, if if the, getting the permitting is any indication of what Pasco County is doing, it's been set back by pandemic. There's no doubt about that. There's a backlog. All right, so we took they gave us an estimate on the cost of the building, correct? Mm -hmm. And how many years ago was that? How many, I'm sorry. How many years ago was that? Two, three? The cost of the building is yes. within, within the past 18 months. Yeah, okay. Within, within, so, so the cost of the building, the cost of the building was actually done in, I think, January, January of this year. I think the, it was, uh, I'm just trying to think back. Uh, November, it's either January or February of this year. Now, the one thing you have to understand, of course, is that was, as we've been talking about, a particular point in time. Um, as you know, construction materials have gone like this, right? So, um, you know, uh, we've not signed a contract, so, you know, they could still go up. But in speaking with the construction guy, uh, our, our uh, construction management um, team, uh, th they said that, you know, that the prices are, yeah, leveling off and actually starting to go down. So maybe it's a good thing we held off a little bit, okay? But that's one thing you have to understand is that the longer you delay, you know, you're running the risk of, of those costs increasing. So um, that's just something to have in the back of your mind. So again, if I remember correctly, for, in the school's incapacity, we expected to generate forty-five to forty-eight thousand dollars in revenue a month. More than that, eighty-six. Yes, but I'm, I'm like clear. Oh yes, 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 yes. Net. Net. Yes. Net to us. Yes. Okay. So I know we're worried about cost, but we need to think about value and mm -hmm. the, the revenue stream, will, which I believe will continue. The revenue stream will continue. So it's not really going to be a burden. It's going to be a bounty. Mm -hmm. And correct. obviously, if, if, if we're doing all the things correctly, then the growth at Hope Church will continue, which we would hope would mean that the giving would go up, which, you know, we're only factoring small incremental into, but if we see a boom from the school, that could do tremendous things for us. Well, they'll see us growing as they mm -hmm. drive by. They will see activity. Mm -hmm. And that's yep. attractive. Yep. If there are no more questions, I will thank you all for your time. Please continue to email, because what happens is everybody goes home, oh, I should have asked that question. So feel free to email it. We're not done with these conversations, and we'll certainly be presenting you know, more information and the cash flow analysis to you in the upcoming weeks. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> you pointed me up. God, our Father in heaven, we thank you so very, very, very much for for our, um, our Hope Church community, our Hope Church family. And we ask you, Lord, to please um, um, send us your uh, guiding light and, and instruct us in, in what you want to do. Um, and we thank you for giving us this opportunity. Amen. Amen. Thank you.